Death on the Nile is officially out. And yeah, somebody died. Me, watching this film. Boo, you stink! Nope, not funny. <sighs> Fair enough, I tried. Let me roll that intro. And here we go. World's greatest detective, Hercule Poirot's Egyptian vacation aboard a glamorous river steamer turns into a terrifying search for a murderer when a picture-perfect couple's idealistic honeymoon is tragically cut short. And that was the quick synopsis for this film, Death on the Nile. And this is yet another investigation for Detective Hercule Poirot, which I know I'm butchering his name in. You know what? That's okay. And uh, this is the follow-up to Murder on the Orient Express. And believe it or not, this is more of the same, but just a lesser version. And the saving grace for this film to me is Kenneth Brogner. And to nobody's surprise, you know, he brings it this film. He really does. And the way his character bounces from a playful and fun demeanor to such an extremely serious broken, vulnerable, and calculated machine at times. His character had so much more layers to peel this go around, and they tried to establish that from the start in such an interested way. Now that's as far as it goes for well-balanced, well-written characters. I struggled at times trying to find anything redeeming for this cast. A lot of these characters came off as unlikable wooden surface level tropes to the point where certain things occur to some of them and you don't really care because there's not really that attachment to them. The script was very uneven at times and absolute horrendous pacing. It took well over an hour for it to really start going and a lot of unnecessary exposition and setup that really didn't go anywhere. It made the film drag at times, one well, majority of the time. And it felt like there wasn't 100% sure what route they wanted to take this film. Where I honestly think this film messed up is it took itself way too serious. It was in dire need of them to just reel it back some and just have some fun. The tone was just all over the place, especially with the cast. And some of these actors and actresses I've seen in other roles where they're acting and performing on a much higher level. Like in this film, you even have Russell Brand, Letitia Wright, Army Hammer, who takes a bite out of his role. <laughs> no? All right. I thought I'd try it again. Anyways, but I have to stop right here and give my praise to Gal Gadot. And um, no, not as far as her acting goes. Uh -huh. Oh God, no, no, no. <laughs> I have to praise her for the way she has all of Hollywood fooled, have them completely bamboozled into thinking that she can act. Game recognized game player. Because um, in this film, boy, oh boy. <laughs> There's a certain part where she is, um, trying to convey emotion and I had a hard time trying to figure out what <laughs> emotion she was trying to portray. Her face was contorted into just such unnatural, inhumane, I can't even describe it. But yeah, she, yeah, she, she's running game in Hollywood and she's getting roles left and right and, mm. but let me not make it seem like I have anything against her because Listen, in Wonder Woman 2017, she was great, and that's about the only thing I've seen her great in, but listen, if the checks keep coming, why stop now? Now, you're probably asking yourself, this is a whodunit. They gotta have nailed that aspect, right? I'll let you answer that yourself. I'll just say that I had the whodunit probably about 90% figured out well before the film was over, and... The only reason it wasn't at 100% is because this film really, really wants you to throw logic straight out the window. Straight out the window. And it wants you to forego any sense of realism. And 
that's where this film really, really lacks. This cast really, really let me down because I expected a lot more from them. Like, say what you want about Army Hammer. I think he's a pretty good actor. Letitia Wright does her thing. And um, even Russell Brand here and there, he has his uh, decent performances. But man, I don't know what, what happened. I don't know if anybody, they just expected this to be an easy payday, but tone all over the place, serious in some aspects. It's just, uh, I don't know what to say. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Death and Denial. I was, it's gonna be a short one because I don't wanna just rag on this film 24 seven, but yeah, um, I went into this film confused into, as to why there was a sequel to the first one and I left the exact same way. Kenneth Brogner has to be one of the most confusing directors working today because I refuse to believe the same director that made Belfast also made this film. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. And how the film started, <laughs> I, I, I had to check my AMC app to make sure that I was in the right film because I'm like, it's impossible. And then what they end up doing with a particular um, actor in the first half that is, I'm like, okay, okay. But yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And that's my quick little review for Death and Denial. And um, I'm just gonna leave you with this. Film is subjective. Just cause I did not like it doesn't mean you're gonna dislike it. I still say give it a chance. You're probably gonna like it way more than I did. It just didn't work for me and that's okay. You know, until next time, I'm out. Peace.